welcome to the Red Men TV. Liverpool have just dispatched Southampton. Finally, finally, for the first time since we snotted them 6 1. Um, great, great, absolutely fantastic, and just what we needed. And weirdly, yet again, not like what you would call a, a memorable or, or vintage or any one of those, you know desperately exciting Liverpool performances we were just good we were just really good and we were just much much better than them and um, we're supposed to be you know Liverpool are supposed to be able to go up against sides who are you know look Southampton not having a great start to the season um, it's not really working out for them Pellegrino's not you know got them playing an amazing brand of footy ever. but they, I've got a, I've got some good players and some of those players have caused us problems in the past look you know the likes of Redmond and what have you He's a decent player. He's very much the next in line to be the big Liverpool transfer, isn't he? Because he plays for Southampton and he's quite tricky. Um, but, you know, look, we, we, we handled everything they've got. And the thing, the player I pointed out in the team news, we had Freddie from the ugly inside with us. And, um, I was talking to him around that, that time. I said, like, Oriel Romeo is the guy who always dominates these football matches. He always looks there. But for me, anyway, he's looked their best player for a number of games for them against us. And he makes me jealous. And I always think, oh, God, I'd love it. I'd love us to have a player like him. Like, for the start, we dominated the midfield. But technically, Roberto, for me, you know, just had him on toast. He had him on toast. He had him, he had him, he sent him out for the echo and a pint of milk and his slippers and a cigar and a smoking jacket. And he put his feet up by the end of the game um, because he absolutely dominated him and thought, for me, you know, was excellent today. Absolutely. You just. It's hard to go into too many superlatives because he doesn't score and he's the number nine for Liverpool, but he did everything else. And for me, if you know, if you, he's the the non Mo Salah man of the match for me. I thought he set the tempo. He was tearing around the place, getting stuck into people, making things happen. It's his shot that it's ultimately saved that leads to Phil Coutinho scoring in the third as well. So look, I thought Firmino was absolutely outstanding. I thought Trent Alexander Arnold had a great game at fullback for Liverpool today. I think all eyes were looking at the team sheet and look, all eyes were on Dejan Lovren. I'll come to him in a moment, but Gomez has been drawing all the plaudits. I think we all would have had Joe Gomez start in this game because he just starts this game. Trent starts the European games. Joe Gomez starts the league games as, as it seems to have been panning out of late. And um, I thought he was great. There's one or two moments when Buffal gets past him and he and, and you think, oh, this and he just slides in and wins the ball back. And, and one when he actually slides in, gets the ball and gets up with it. I thought he was absolutely great and, and again I'm so comfortable with Joe Gomez in, in in that position I think he's really really stepped up his game in the last few weeks and look people seeing it for England as well now but yeah Trent banging on the door you know we're in a really for, who 12 months ago if you'd have told me we'd be missing Nathaniel Clive for the entire entirety of the season and we signed no one to replace him I would be really worried now I'm at the point where look we've got two young very talented lads who either one of them has every right to stake a claim for that regular right back slot and the best thing is we're not going to give it to either we're going to keep it rotating them keep them fresh keep them excited keep them you know under wraps absolutely amazing management and, and you know, great performances from the players look I mentioned Dejan Lovren one or two moments but again I think as a, we talk a lot on the show about confirmation bias if you're looking for reasons to hang Dejan Lovren that one where he randomly kicks it up sort of into the air and then he, he has to like get a flick header or whatever it's fine isn't it it doesn't end in any trouble though Clavan was really good really composed I thought they performed a really decent partnership just a real balance to having a left footed centre uh, left footed centre half and a right footed centre half and we know Lovren's Weirdly, no, he's only worse on the right hand side of the fence, which is mad. Um, but no, I thought the I thought as a partnership they handled what was offered them, which wasn't a great deal to be fair, but I thought they handled it really well. And aside from that, Mo Salah, what more can be said about the man? He's an absolute cool machine. Like when, here's the thing, here's how good we are and, we're, and how good our squad is when you know when what we're not in the midst of a horrendous injury crisis, which is nice to see that we're not at the moment. Um, you don't need four of your best players to be playing absolutely at the peak of the powers. They don't need to be dominating football matches because when you've got that many top quality players on the pitch, it only needs one or two. Salah's the one who's... I mean, just amazing goals today. And then, like, Coutinho could have a quiet game by his own standard, still gets a goal, still drop, still, still, you know, impacts the game. Similarly with Bobby, Bobby Firmino, he's the one who's putting all the running in. Mane didn't, you know, you know, again, he's, he's there, he's involved, he still needs games, he still needs fitness, he, needs, he still needs to get back into the swing of things, but we didn't need him. Last season, we needed Sadio Mane to be at his best, for us to be at his best, and that's a testament to how good Liverpool's squad is right now. Anyway, onwards and upwards, severe in midweek. Let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments below. Tune in on the redmentv.com, we're going to be doing the instant match reaction 
Reaction podcast. And the final word is going to be going up on Monday with a more considered viewpoint of the match. If you want more content from us, that isn't just me talking to the camera immediately after the football match. We do loads of that stuff. Uh, again, go support the show by going to theredmentv.com. Cheers.